batch of lard here. Um, it's actually been cooking down for maybe an hour already. It's a big block of pork fat. Um, K bricks, sometimes anyway, they'll go ahead and run it through their sausage grinder, which basically grinds it up and um, it'll cook down faster this way. I'm not sure I really like that um, because it seemed it you end up with the, the cracklings, which you'll see later, end up a lot smaller pieces. It's hard. I think it's harder to get them sorted out, but and we'll see how it goes. But I think you can see it's already cooked down some. Basically, the the whole process of rendering lard amounts to cooking most of the water out of it. So. I'm getting it started now, it's it's in the evening, and then I'll let it just slowly simmer overnight because there's a lot of water in a block this big. And then tomorrow I will continue taking care of it. This is how it looks after simmering overnight on low. The block of fat is broken up. And there's still some cooking down to do. A little bit stuck on the bottom but not too bad considering how long it simmered without being stirred so I've got it kind of I've got it turned up a little high right now I'll turn it down a little bit and it'll just keep cooking like this throughout the day cooking off the water until temperature starts to rise. Right now I'm sure the temperature is right around boiling, right around 212. So when the temperature starts to rise above that then you know it's cooked off most of the water and you cook it up to 255 or 260. I, I usually go kind of to the higher end of that. And then at that point it's done. So I will continue with this and check back on it again later. Hey. This is pretty close to the right temperature at this point. About 250, or a little higher. So I'd like to go up to about 260. But it means that means it's getting close to having enough of the water cooked out. You can see the little bits of skin and meat basically that don't cook away or, I don't know if skin's quite the right word but basically there's little bits of fiber in the meat that end up being what you call cracklings and some people will take those if you've got like a press like a sausage press or a wine press you can squeeze these out to get a little more lard out of them I don't I don't really bother I just feed them to the chickens because um, this, this is a lot of lard as it is. So I'm going to give that a little more time, let it get up to about 260 or so, and then it'll be time to finish it off. Okay, I got it up to about 260 or so for a while, and then I turned it off and I've let it sit here long enough to cool down a little bit just so it's not quite as hot to deal with because this is a lot of a lot of hot fat to be handling so I think you can see the cracklings have kind of settled to the bottom so what I'll do now is I'll take it and pour off just kind of the pour off the top um, the liquid the clear liquid on top I'll pour it through a strainer into this bucket here and I won't try to get all of it at this point, I'll just pour off the top, kind of, and then work with it a little more after that. Okay, I've poured off most of it, and when this cools, it'll be white. Um, it'll probably take overnight to cool. I'll put a lid on it here. Um, now I'm not quite finished yet, because over here in the pot, there's still the cracklings and some, still a little bit of liquid here that I'd like to get so what I'll do is I'll pour it in batches into this sieve let let drain out what will and then move the cracklings into something else that I can throw out to the chickens so 
I'll do that in a few batches here. Um, there's two, I don't have a sieve big enough to handle that many cracklings, so it'll take a few batches through the sieve, and then I can pour what's left. I can pour what's drained through then over into the bucket. After sitting overnight, it's cooled off enough that it started to solidify. It's not on top yet, but I think you can kind of see um, down below it is. So the warmer the weather, the longer it takes, but it's pretty hot when you start out. So it takes it a while to cool down really to, would you say, room temperature and uh, all turn solid. So I will let it sit the rest of today and then it should be solided up. Um, these are the cracklings I ended up with, so they'll go to the chickens. No sense in wasting anything. The last little bit of it that I drained out of the cracklings with a sieve, um, I'll probably just use this out of this bowl rather than add it to the, the bucket because this will have, you can see that this I put in the fridge overnight so it's gotten good and solid. But it'll have more little bits of stuff on the bottom. You can kind of see that there that settled out of it. So I don't like to put that in the bucket um, because that lard by itself will keep a long time. But the more other stuff, the more other pieces of pork are in it, the less it'll keep. So I'll use this first and then start on the bucket. It'll all be clean. And this is what it looks like when it's done. So it's so almost solid now. It's still still firming up, but this is basically what it'll look like. It might get a little whiter, but it's basically done. So I think this is, I guess this is a three gallon bucket, so this would be about six quarts. This will last me quite a while since I'm not doing any bacon around here these days. Um, if you used it as shortening and biscuits and pies and stuff like that, it would go faster. But I'll just be using it in frying um, and a few, th basically a lot of places where you might normally use shortening or oil or something like that, I'll use this. So I'm working, I need to work out a mayonnaise recipe using it because that's one thing that, especially if you're low carbon, mayonnaise is awfully handy. But it's all basically made of soybean oil these days. Um, unless you want to really pay through the nose, you can get some that's like part olive oil, part canola oil, which isn't the worst thing in the world, but the olive oil is okay. Don't don't need the canola oil. But um, making it with lard, you end up with um, a lot thicker a substance because of the saturated fat. So it's not you know, creamy and spreadable like mayonnaise is at refrigerator temperature. So, anyway, I need to work on that, see if I can come up with a... I've, I've tried it once or twice before, haven't been real thrilled with it, but I need to see what I can come up with. Anyway, that is how to make lard. Um, not all that much to it. It takes a couple days, but most of the time it's just spent uh, letting it slowly cook and checking on it and stirring it once in a while. And then you end up with lard to use for a while. So thanks for watching, and I hope this comes in useful.